All right. Okay. Well, I am super excited to have some of my team share tonight kind of what is what they're growing in, what they're learning from, and some coming back. Um, so I can't wait to kind of share that and share their journey. So I actually have four women that's going to be, we're going to do like a round table. I'm going to ask questions to them. They'll just share. And these four women are all incredible and on so many different journeys. Two are brand new. Two are, well, two are brand new, but two are brand new as in coming back. They started the products a long time ago. One of them, even the business really, and now are just completely come back. And then the other two are on their way to gold. And so I'm going to have them share their journey with that as well. And kind of what they're learning and, and growing in um, things of that nature. But I want, I can't wait to see you guys see the takeaways from both of them and why it's so, so important to what I say, taproot or always connect with your people, even if they've fallen off for years and years ago, um, or connect with people that might've done, or you heard they did plexus prior, and then they're just ready to do it again, because you just, you, you don't never know on that as well. So I'm going to introduce, I have Tanya, Michelle, Sam, and Amanda. And so I'm going to just ask some questions to them. And then again, if you guys have questions that pop up as we're chatting or talking, please put them in the comments because this is what's important is you guys can glean and learn from them on what they're learning as they're going in their business and what's what's working, what's not, what maybe light bulb moments they've had on this new journey as they're getting started in this business um, and what they're loving. And so I'm going to start with Sam and Michelle. Let me see if I can, there you are, Sam. Okay. Um, so Sam and Michelle, these ladies are growing to gold. So they're both senior silver, both the same rank, about started the same time, which is super exciting. And so we're going to talk really quick about really, let's go back on the four, the, the four pillars that Brittany Howard always talks about. And I hope you guys know this. So if you know them, shout them in the comments because these calls have been happening for a long time. So hopefully, you know, most of these four pillars and if you do, I'm going to give you about five more seconds and then I'll kind of start shouting them out, but post them in the comments if you know what those four pillars are. Come on, people. Oh, Carissa, you already said it, but keep going. Everybody else, don't look at Carissa's answers. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So the four pillars, and I know nobody on the recording can see the comments, but it is recruiting. We can recruit all day long, right? Retention. It is, this is about customer care, retaining these people. What can you do differently that is not Amazon? Retain those people. Then you have duplication. How can you create duplication inside of those people? What does it look like to have them refer and things of that nature? Then leadership having people learn so that they can duplicate and keep moving into what God has them doing right now into their, into their purpose, into their gifting. So Sam and Michelle, I would love for you to kind of answer, what do you feel out of those four pillars that you feel like you guys feel like you're like, okay, I do, I'm doing really good at this pillar, whether that's retention or customer care, or what is, what does that look like for you? What's your top? that you feel like you're good at? Okay, if I'm gonna go, huh? um, I guess mine would be leadership. Um, I feel like I am good at making the posts that get people, I wouldn't say like super interested, but like, I feel like my posts are relatable and I'm getting better at them being relatable. And so, I've been posting my fitness journey for years and years and years. And so I have, I've had lots of people tell me like how inspiring that is and, and all that kind of stuff. So for me, if I was to pick one of the four, it would be leadership for that, that reason. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Michelle, and I'll come back here in a minute. So I'm going to preface this by saying, I'm going to pretend that you asked me this question about a week ago and I would have said retention. Okay. But this week has actually been a struggle for me because two of my new VIPs from last month both quit on me this week. And I knew that would happen. I've heard you guys talk about that, um, but it's still sad. So uh, I feel like, and I actually have reached out to both of them um, to find out. I said something about, 
you know, I want to be able to serve my friends and family better. So the one lady I used to work with and we were, we were pretty close. And I said, can you tell me um, what I could have done differently to have helped you take your products consistently and stayed on track? And she was like, oh, you know, it's not you. She said, honestly, right now, I, I don't have the money. And then the other lady was not in the right frame of mind. So I'm still going to, even though my answer might not technically be retention right now, I'm going to try to turn that around and do that. But that's okay. That's two people. Don't let your retention fall on just two people. We all have it. I mean, raise your hands if you've had people fall off, right? And some people that you feel like they're my next runner, they're going crazy. They're going to go run and do all the things and right. Those people even leave. So don't beat yourself up on that. But I will tell you, this is why it's good to always continually love on them because they're just not some, even though as much as you do and as much as you share with them and, and, and be like, Hey, but remember you said this and remember sometimes people are just like, no, I'm not, not right now. Their mindset, you can't get past it. And so when they're ready, you're going to be there. So just continually love on those two people. And you never know when they're physically and truly mentally ready, they will be right back. So Retention is good for you because you've had several stay this whole time, which is why you're getting so close to gold. And so that's the beautiful thing. And so back to Sam with leadership, I don't even think leadership, yes, but really what you were saying was you were showing value for your people. And so you might be showing a higher level of leadership in your posts, but you're you're really gaining value from other people and want to glean into your health journey. And so Sam has been posting very authentically about her weight loss journey and her gym and like uh, all those things. So I would highly recommend you guys go watch her because it's, it's powerful to watch uh, her journey. And this is why posts like this are what are standing out for people. People want to see authenticness, not fakeness, right? And so that's why you are a more leader in that aspect because people are truly wanting to glean in because they don't see that often. They want to compare to the gym perfect person and X, Y, Z, okay? Um, so yes, I definitely agree with that. And that's why you guys are going on your way to gold, which is going to happen very quickly. And I cannot wait to watch that. Okay, so I'm going to now go to Tanya and Amanda and I'm going to share their journey really fast. Um, these two girls started again. And so Amanda, I actually know from the gym, um, it is a girl that I have loved on for about a year and she is now back on and getting started. And I'm super excited. She wants the business and she's ready to go. She is one away from silver already. And same with Tanya. Tanya is one away from silver too. And this girl, the exact same story. You know, she started a long time ago, took the products, saw a little bit of the business, um, but now sees a business in a whole different light. And she is excited. Both of them are excited to, honestly, all my team is excited to grow this business for the kingdom. And that is what I love, that people are seeing the same vision that I see in this. And it's growing because I'm pouring that belief down. And so Tanya and Amanda, I would love to know, why is it looking so different this time around? And what are you loving? Um, I feel like just having um, a little bit of background and knowledge um, and just the insight to know how to recruit better, I guess. Um, though the words are still not there, but I lean on Cassie. So when people ask questions that I don't understand, I just go to her. But I used to... Um, not follow up. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is the follow up. Um, I didn't want to feel like that sales pitch person. So, and I'm not real pushy, but um, I feel like this time it's coming from the heart and not about the money. So I see it in a whole different light. Like it's more about making everybody better in a whole um, Christ first health second. And so I think that's what has really helped me this time. Mm, yes. And I think the biggest thing is you're going past the obstacles on truly feeling pushy, because if you're following out and following in love, you should never be pushy or feel that way. That's the enemy. The enemy wants you to feel like, oh, don't, don't reply back to that person. You're going to be that salesperson. Yes. And so when you take it in the fact that you were just touching back with them because they were interested, then right. that definitely is a different mindset for sure. Yes. Okay, Amanda, what about you? Um, for me, it's kind of being real authentic. You know, I've, it's been four years since I finished, since I stopped taking the products. Um, I've had some significant health 
fluctuations throughout those times. And I, like when I met you at the gym, I was like, Hey, I know what that stuff is. It works, but it's not for me. Yep. And you're like, okay. You know, and you just kept loving on me and you know, through all of this, it's just now I, like, I know what works. I know what doesn't work. And, um, I had it on my head just a second ago and it's just, it, it is, it's being authentic. I'm not, I'm not salesy this time. Like the every, I, I look at my posts from when I did this before and I just cringe. Like it sounds so awful when I read it and it's, it is literally all, it's all sales. I just vomited plexus and there was no realness to me. And I'm like, you know what? Here's how it is. Here's what it did for me before. Here's what it does for me now. And like it or not, like this is, this is true. I have diabetics on both sides of my family. I know it works. And yeah. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh. I cannot begin to tell you how much, how cringy my posts used to be. So. And I, I, I can guarantee there's several of us that have been in this, in, like in plexus for a long, long time. All of us have done that. I look back in my memories and I'm like, people, <laughs> people ordered from me or wait, people stayed with me after all this. And then I look at my messages, like even from 2018. And I'm like, when we were going for the cruise, it was all about me. Hey, help me win this cruise. Help me. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. You don't see it sometimes because you're, you, you have blinders on a different way. And so as you learn in leadership, you guys, this is why that pillar is so key in diving into books, reading, listen to podcasts, things of that nature, because that is where you take that level of leadership to the next and how we continue to grow and learn from what, oh man, I did that yesterday. Whoops. Okay. Restart. And this is well, why and I, I I'll agree with Tanya. We can, I can go to my upline and everybody within our team and get legit help where I didn't have that backing before. It's like, oh, well, make this post, make this post, make this post, and not really have the knowledge to, hey, you know what? I'm going to find out, and I'm going to get that back to you, and I'll send that voice message. To, that's what That helped me a big time, is sending those voice recordings to these to my friends and people that, and like at church, were like, hey, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Tell me about this. And I just, just tell them. But having that, having that upline, having that, that team surround you is huge. Yeah, it does make a difference for sure. And I, I think the other thing is what I was going to say is the Phil, Phil Jones, his exactly what to say book. I will bleed it till I'm eyes bloodshot until you guys read this It is powerful. And the fact that even if you mess up in a message prior, you can always go back and be like, oh man, I really screwed that one up. Can, can I start again? Can you forgive me? And that was huge when I learned from him on that. And so that's the beauty of what I'm teaching these girls is like voice messages, videos, things of that nature are going to show your authentic self. It might feel hard to do, but that's what these girls are doing and what they're learning from and gleaning in. Um, Okay. Um, If y'all have questions, pop them in the chat really quick too, because so Michelle, really quick, tell us how you started your journey, what you saw, because you saw it from your cousin and that's who shared it with you. And then I'll ask Sam, you too. Um, yeah, I was so tired of feeling sick and tired. And actually the night that Jen had um, the online, the it was a gut health event and I was laying in bed, not feeling well at all. Um, I was diagnosed a couple of years ago with type two diabetes. Um, I've suffered from diverticulitis, irritable bowel. Um, I had a colon resection. So some pretty, you know, significant health stuff through the years. And I remember saying to my husband, you know, I think I want to try that. And he was like, well, you've tried so many things. And I said, but what if this would be the one thing that would make a difference? And I just know that that was all in God's timing because it has helped my health. It has helped my self-confidence. It has helped my walk with Christ. It has helped me become bolder. I mean, I could just go on and on. Um, And for anybody that would say, well, we need to see the black and white, like we don't go by feelings. My first labs when I had been on, I don't even think I had been on the products for three full months. And 
my triglycerides came down. I mean, more than double what they had been. It, it was just, it was just amazing. So that was like actual proof. Proof Crazy. in the pudding. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so when you started sharing and, and how did that start feeling as you started getting new customers? Like what, <laughs> what did, like, what did that feeling feel like? I'll never forget when Jen was like, I think it was the next day or the day after. And she's like, would you want to get your products for free? And I was like, well, duh, who doesn't want free product? But I, I wasn't quite ready, but she was very convincing. And so I just was honest. And the first few times that um, people reached out to me and That's wanted to know, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I can, I can do this. I can share. So in direct answer to your question, it was exciting. Uh, it was kind of like an adrenaline rush at first. Like, you know, when, when you go silver, I was like, well, look at this, I can do this. So that kind of helps that keep that ball rolling of the belief that you have. Mm-hmm. just deepens it, I think. Oh yeah. And then how does it feel seeing your customers success now? Amazing because I love to be able to, as we all do, to share that blessing, what we've found and to be able to share that with others. Yeah. How do you feel Wonderful. like, where do you feel like your boldness came from where you just started sharing and didn't allow other people's opinions or whatever kind of stop you? Because I feel like that's a big roadblock for a lot of people is they're too afraid to share until they have their own results or, or just too afraid to share in just general. So how do you feel like you've (laughs) overcome that? Uh, Honestly, I think part of that was probably, I, I was thinking to myself, okay, if I can get my products, my own products paid for, then I can keep taking these and do the 90 days and see if it really makes a difference. And then as Tim, my husband, you know, kind of watches, then that's going to make it financially easier for us. So, yeah. And then uh, I, I don't know it. I'm not an outspoken person, but I, I'm also not, I don't know, not necessarily very easily influenced. Like if I believe in something and I think because you guys just shine Christ. And I thought, what, what other place (laughs) could I go? And I mean, just the other day, I, it wasn't Plexus related, but I was with my cousin and I invited her to a special church service. And I just feel like I'm at this point in my life where that's what God is impressing is that you have something that's going to help with health, yes, but you also have me and to share the gospel. And I feel like this is the platform that he intended for me to use. Amen. Ah, oh, amen, girl. So <laughs> Sam, how did it feel when you just got somebody to add somebody? Because I know that just happened recently too. How am I supposed to back up Michelle, man? That's uh, so good. Because, oh, stop. You have an incredible story too, girl. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, it was awesome to have someone sign someone. Um, I don't know if she's like super ready to jump in for business wise, but I told her like, you could get extra, you know, money for a free product. So she thought that was, that was pretty cool. So we're going to start with there and, and see where else we can go with that. But yeah. And I think that's what it starts. You guys It's just small micro commitments, not big commitments. Now it is good to give them a bigger picture of what the journey could do for their family. And so like I always tell my team, like give them, don't just do add three and get 300 because yeah, when they do that, they're like, great, I'm done. And so if you give them a bigger picture of like what that actually could do, like, okay, great. Let's help get your products covered. But what would a big blessing be for your family? What would that, what could, what would, what could that an extra don't even say money. Like what could extra income look for you? Like what would be a biggest blessing? Sometimes it's like, oh man, if I could just have a thousand dollars extra a month, that would be great. What would that do? And like, I feel like I tell my team, peel the onion. Don't just stop, peel the onion. And so when you do that, then you give them a bigger picture, which is why I think a lot of these girls are here because they see a bigger picture versus just adding their three and getting their 300. Cause we're seeing that everywhere right now. Right. And I think if we do that, we are also doing a disservice because we're stopping people at that three and 300. Yes, it gets them in, but paint a bigger picture, cast that vision for them too. Um, So Sam, and also you have, um, 
Uh, so new customers and stuff. So how did that feel? And what did you do to start sharing that journey of the, of, of adding and referring? Um, so funny because it was, I was at work and I had both of my drink mixes on the counter. I was mixing my stuff up. They work in the building next to me. Um, and they asked, they just asked what I was drinking. So I just shared with them, kind of told them what it did. And they're like, oh man, we need some of that. And they're like, where do we get it? And I was like, well, you know, this was kind of like my first like in-person conversation. And I was like, well, um, like you get it from me. So <laughs> It was kind of like a weird start to it, yeah. But then I kind of, and they're like, "Well, you know, does it benefit like benefit you? Do I get paid for it?" And I was like, "Yes, I do." And they're like, "Awesome, cool, you know, sign us up right now." And it was like just all of a sudden weird. So, um, I'd signed up one, and then the other girl signed up under her, and I it like happened within an hour. Like I don't even know what happened, but. Hey, but like Chris yeah. just said, you just owned it. Like you were, you were presented with something in that moment and you didn't go, Ooh, and you shy away. Right. You're like, Oh my gosh, I'm in paralyzed mode. Right. It's like, no, yeah, you can uh, grab it for me. Sure. And you guys, mm -hmm. I will tell you, you all have moments this way. Like there's days I'm like, Oh, why did I say that? Why did I say that? And you keep getting better and better. And your elevator speech progresses to where it's like, I help people feel their best. And I help people get to root issues. You know, I struggled with endometriosis and I don't know what your health journey looks like, but these could be a blessing for you too. I've been helping, you know, hundreds do that as well. And like, it gets so minute now, you just make it simple. And so yeah, I'd be like, yeah, you actually get it from me here. You Do you need the link? Let's talk a little bit more. Uh, so I love that. Okay. Um, so Tanya and Amanda, um, why do you, I'm trying to think what really quick, do y'all have any questions so far for these four ladies? Cause two are restarting and then anything yet or no? Cause if not, I'll just keep asking questions really quick. No. Okay. Um, so Tanya and Amanda, I know that you both have bigger visions and what those dreams look like now that maybe you didn't have back then. Tell us a little bit about that. Like what's your big vision now that you might not have seen before? Both of them are like, oh, who goes first? Well, I felt like I went first last time, so I should give her the floor. But um, I don't, I mean, obviously any little bit of income helps, but it's really, it's not even about income. It's honestly just about helping other people. And I think I haven't really reached out to many people. I have people messaging me every day this past two weeks, and it's just because I'm sharing life. Not like last time I shared Plexus and I feel like that's the difference. It's being personal. Like Cassie had said early, earlier, it's just, you know, sharing what I'm doing in my day and just kind of throwing a little bit of Plexus in just to show them how it's helping me get through like four hours of sleep or, you know, whatever may be going on that day. And it's, it's more just the journey for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And this is where really fast, this is where you guys, when you have people say that, I just want to wait till my, you know, I have a journey or I have, you know, results and then I'll share. I always tell people completely understand. But what I have found is that most people love following a journey versus a destination. They want to follow all of the things as you are going versus going, oh, I've been taking this for a year now and I feel great. People feel like sold to then. And they feel like they lost out on the beautiful things that happened all in between. And so I always say that I was like, Hey, just that's totally fine. I will respect whichever you, but I will tell you what I have found is that people love following a journey and not the end destination. So that helps. Okay. Amanda. Um, honestly, I'm just, I'm just real. Like, that's the only thing, like, like you said, just I mean, I talk about my kids. I talk about, I'm not, it, every post is not about Plexus. It's just, for me, my vision is I'm going to do this regardless because I know how much better I feel on it because I have my, I have, I know how I felt then. I know how I feel now. Um, and I'm just going to, that, that's my goal is just to, to share with people. You want to try it? Cool. If not, I'm be here when you want to. Um, where before it was like, you know, you have to be on these products. It's like, you know, kind of like I was, I was sharing, talked to my sister yesterday about the Lord and she, 
in her words, has differences of beliefs. Cool. I said, I will tell you about God and Jesus all day. And same thing. I will tell you about Plexus all day, but it's up to you when I, whatever I give you that knowledge is up to you, what you do with that. And so that's kind of how I've have that mindset with this is like, I'm going to take these products. I'm going to drink it. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be authentic. I'm not, I'm going to put it out there and what you take with it, what you will. And I'll be here when you're ready. So I want y'all to see a different, in all of these women, they're all being real, authentic, and bold in their posts. That is what is attracting people. And I want you guys to think about who you follow on Instagram or Facebook. What do you love about them? Because if you're following those people, that is often what people are wanting to see too. And so sometimes I'm like, I follow a lot of Christian encouragement and then funny people that dance or whatever. I have all these dancing reels that tend to pop up because that's the algorithm, right? And so I'm like, huh, okay, so I need to dance more. I need to like be funny or I need, because people want to see real and, and something when they need that laughter or they need to feel like, oh my gosh, my deodorant melted too in the car. I, I don't feel alone or whatever, right? And so- we need to show people that we're struggling and have obstacles as well so they can connect to us. So that's what these women are doing in their posts and why they're growing and they're getting silver and senior silver and gold. Um, like they're on their way, which I'm super excited. But we all know that sometimes there's obstacles. So what do you all feel like was or is an obstacle that you are starting to overcome now? And judgment. Any- judgment. Okay. Fear. Fear. Mm -hmm. People ghosting you instead of just responding, no, thank you. They just don't say anything at all. Yeah. And not to take that personal because it's not against you. It's whatever they're going through. Maybe they're just too embarrassed once they find out the cost or like that's another thing I've done different this time is the no is not to me or even to Plexus. Sometimes it's just they they're really interested and they're still watching and they're going to come around. It's just Mm -hmm. maybe not the right time. Yep. Exactly. Michelle, you were muted. I know you said, okay. I, my answer was all of the above (laughs) everything that they said. (laughs) Yeah. So judgments of others, you know, overcoming the ghosting and the nose, but how do you feel like you guys are, what are you overcoming in that? Like what has gotten you to say, okay, it's fine. Like, what do you feel like has helped you overcome those things? Just knowing that it's in God's timing. Like, I just know that it, it's, if they want it, they know I'm here. They know that I'm not going to sit here and sell them something. I'm going to be completely honest with my friends and I'm not, you know, it, I just have to know that what I'm doing is authentic and I'm not, I'm not selling things. I want to help people. And that's literally this time around. All I've ever wanted to do is help people. That's the same for me. I mean, it's just my faith and just sharing my journey really. And just hoping that other people see that and it brings them to want to grow it with Christ and their health. Yeah. And for me, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, I think um, there, I have received no's where before I would have, probably like turned and cowered and sometimes I've noticed that okay I'm just kind of going on about my day and I thought well who is this person (laughs) it's kind of a nice surprise because then to realize that yeah it's not they're not telling me no like you guys said it's 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 not their time right Mm -hmm. right then Yeah, I agree with Michelle too. Just you, I, I've tried to start using the no's as conversation starters. So after they say no, I start a different conversation. I'm like, cool, no worries, whenever you're ready. And then I will ask them something else, you know? So then I still keep their conversation going and just let them know, you know what? No, no worries. If you're not interested right now, that's fine. But how's yeah. your vacation? And then we just keep yes. going. And I think that's the thing is keeping the relationship going. Don't make it just feel like it's a plexus relationship because then they're going to feel that. Um, So Mm -hmm. what do you guys feel like is the best tools or videos or podcasts or whatever that you feel like you love listening or gleaning into that has helped you with a lot of these objections or overcoming some things that you feel like were an obstacle? 
having the team support really honestly because like you mean even last night when i was we were zooming and um julie got on and i was like hey about this situation like what you know and any of our other Zoom team calls i'm like hey what would you guys do where before i would have to text somebody or or you know shoot them a message and have to wait and wait and wait and wait where literally all the time i can be like hey what about this or shoot you a voice message and i know you're gonna get back with me asap where i would hear crickets for days or you know hours and i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to help this person timely and then that would you know mess up that whole conversation i was having with this person at the time yeah. So I know I can go to Samantha or Michelle or you or anybody on our team and can get a legit answer. You guys can shoot me something like, hey, go to this board, go here, go here, go here. And you can, you got that answer. I agree. I mean, I feel like anybody on here is a wealth of information. I mean, or just go to our personal groups and ask, you know, in any of the Plexus Facebook groups. You can read back or, you know, see a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. I have really um, loved all of the <clears throat> self-development books and podcasts too, but I don't know. I am like a book in my hand kind of a girl. Um, and right now I'm reading, is it Get Over Your Damn Self, I think? Yeah, that's and Mm -hmm. That one, like right from the beginning, I, I was like, okay, I'm into this. It wasn't one of those where it's a little, it's a little slower start or whatever. It's like, okay. So, oh yeah. She drops a lot of things real fast, but <laughs> if you actually listen, my favorite is once I got the book and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to listen to this too. I started, I downloaded the audible. I'm telling you having her in your ear as you're reading on another level. So you guys, that's okay. one of my favorite leadership books. John Maxwell is one of my, one of my favorites too, but yeah. I feel like for people starting out. And so if a lot of you guys are starting out and if you've not read that book, highly recommend getting her audible and getting the book. So you can highlight every time don't highlight the F bombs and other things that she might drop just saying it's not a, you know, great, great book, but she is powerful in the fact that you have to get over this. And so it's really, it's really good. Um, Sam, what about you? Um, so I'm with Amanda. I love our team chats, our accountability chats. I can pop questions in there or someone replied to me, how should I reply to this? But I think recently my favorite thing is I will put on some sermon from usually either Michael Todd, Stephen Furtick or, uh, Craig Rochelle, I think is how you say his last name. I, for those, cause it's, it's not so much like what to say but it's kind of more like what does Jesus say about me and so it's who I am which I think builds your confidence in posting you are posting who you are you are posting what you believe and so those things help me with like just filling my mind again with you know who I am already is perfect so mm, amen I listened to one today and I sent it in, into our chat and it was powerful um, and I, I agree, you know, sometimes following a biblical leadership guide, so, you know, somebody like Brittany Howard, even, or, you know, Craig Rochelle or things of that nature, highly, highly motivating. And the fact that it really points you in the right direction. Um, if you are a Christian and you're moving in that way, it, it really puts you in perspective where, where you're going and what you can do in your giftings and what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Cause we, we are, God commands us to use our giftings. The problem is most people don't do it because they're afraid and they're afraid of failure. That's it right there. Um, okay. So any other podcasts or anything else that you like listening to anybody? Um, any of you four girls? Okay. Um, any other questions really quick for these ladies before we start closing up a little bit? Okay. My last one, what strategy have you tried? That was a really big win that you didn't expect. You were like, oh, I did it. And oh my gosh, this is what happened. Like anything that like pops up that you're like, I didn't want to do it, but it was a win and I'm glad I did it. Those sneaking voice messages. I hate the sound of my voice on recording. You're and welcome. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But 
all of my friends have listened and have gotten right back to me that I've sent that out to. And there are still follow-up conversations. Um, yeah, that's been the biggest thing. I never, ever in my wildest dreams thought that, that would help. But I understand it because it's personable. Yeah. You can hear you can hear me and not just read the text message. Right. Because we have to stand out amongst the noise, right? And if you're sending a video or a voice message, you're standing out where a lot of people are copying, pasting and whatever. I will tell you, I sent somebody just a happy birthday and she was like, I don't want any of this stuff. I, I'm not doing it anymore, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, I just said happy birthday. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. That was to the wrong per- person. I was like, man, that's pretty sad. You're getting poached on your birthday. So sorry. And she was like, oh, no, we're, you know, so sorry. We had a great conversation after that, but just be different. Like happy birthday, voice message, video, whatever that is. So what about you ladies? A win that you didn't anticipate. Um, so I'll do, um, I'm with Amanda, the voice messages too, but also, um, I know this kind of sounds weird, but like the apologetic messages, like for people that have ghosted you going back and be like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I get conversations right away by doing that all the time. Usually when I do that, I, when I lead into that, when I get ghosted, it's like, Sam, is everything okay? Did I, did I do anything? Or, or sometimes I'm not, might even leave that. It's like, is everything okay? I know life is busy. I just want to make sure, are you okay? Um, because people need to feel like they're acknowledged and recognized right now in today's world. And I mean, they've got 20 million activities and other things. And so times, sometimes they see your message or their kid sees your message. And so don't ever feel like, oh my gosh, she's ghosting me. And I've, I've sent her two and she's totally ignoring me now. It could be that like my daughter has my phone half the time. And I go back a month later, I'm like, I didn't see this message. So just remember that. That's why I call people out. I'm like, Hey, is everything okay? I just want to make sure. So yeah, that's a good win for sure. Sam, what about you, Michelle? Tell me anything. Am I muted? Can't, yeah. You're muted. Oh, now, now you're good. I can hear now you. I'm, huh? My computer is backwards. Anyway. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is the answer, an answer to the specific question that you're asking, but something that stands out in my mind is, um, a friend of mine from high school, and this was early on in the journey. And I had just been posting, I think I'm maybe had done a couple of lives and she messaged me and she was like, what is it that you are doing? Because I want some of that. And at that time, I mean, that was a, that was a great thing to get at the very beginning because I was like, I mean, she was, you know, like salutatorian or valedictorian of the class, one of those really smart people. And I thought, okay. And she wants to know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, and I think because did you do lives before? No. Mm-mm. See, that is the difference. You did something you probably was an objection before, like, why do I need to do a lie? Blah, blah, blah. But people saw your boldness and you were just sharing because, and that's why confidence is showing in your audience when you do lives. So that's a huge win because that's why she reached out to you. It was the lives. And then Sam, I have to call her out. She did her own messenger event recently, just her own completely on her own, no guidance, just did it. That is leadership. And so that's the other thing, like confidence I'm seeing in these ladies on all of them is powerful. And so just know if you are trying to like find your business builder or help, you are just that, you're just that arm right next to them and helping them. I know you don't want to do that voice message, but girl, I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. Come on, you you can do it. Or like, okay, you can do that messenger event. I know you can. Um, Helping them into that leadership role is huge because then as they see themselves in that leadership role, they're like, oh my gosh, I, that that's it. Oh, oh, I think I can do this. And then they get another layer and they keep growing and growing and growing until, you know, they get to, you know, whatever ranks they need to and where they're wanting in their dreams. And then they, it keeps flourishing. So, and um, this is why always being a learner is huge. Okay. 
that was powerful, ladies. I am so grateful that you all shared. And again, learn. I hope you guys caught some good little tips or tricks or things that you can use for your team, um, help motivate them and, and challenge them to do some of the scary things for their wins or just maybe build belief into them, cast that vision that they might not see yet because that's why these girls are here. We casted vision hard for them, but we're alongside of them every single step of the way. So it's a great reminder, be available. Like I'm available sometimes, not be always available. Like there's boundaries, like on the weekends or whatever, right? But like, um, if I'm in the bathroom, I might have my phone. And if Sam is, is messaging me, she might get a toilet reply. That's just how it is, right? But I wanna be available because if that girl is going gold and she's two of people away, I'm going to make myself available. Julia is highly available for her. And so is Michelle or for Michelle. And that's the difference with our team is we are, when those people are ready and they're wanting to grow fast now, I'm going to give their, them my attention the most. So, okay. Yeah. Urgency is key. Okay. Thank you guys for showing up tonight. Let's crush this last week. Punta Cana, come on. I hope to see every single one of you there. Do not claim you are not getting there. Claim you are and find a way. I tell you, there's tons of ways. You just have to believe it. Listen to a podcast, do whatever to get your mind right and move forward. So love you guys. Glad that you came. And thank you, ladies. Love you. Love you. Bye. Hey, guys, really quick. I just wanted to pop on really fast and say a yeah. reminder. Next Monday, not Tuesday, uh, Carissa and I are going to be hosting the leadership over the next three episodes because it's all the same topic how to manage it all. <laughs> so make sure you pop on. We didn't want to do Tuesday because of Halloween. So that's the scoop. So go listen to those three podcasts. They're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Cassie, for hosting and girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs>